have the cure. Ooh, oh, not that kind of cure. <laughs> they can't make you better. I mean, they can, but like emotionally. <laughs> no, don't cry. <gasps> Your tears just smell so bad. Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. All right, y'all, we is back, and we got lots to get into this episode. Unnamed Footage Festival is happening next month, y'all. So get your tickets, go to the unnamedfootagefestival.com for all the info. And stay tuned, because the first wave of films that are gonna be shown will be dropping soon. You don't wanna miss it, because we got some good bangers this time. You might see some frogs, y'all. You know. Stay tuned. So we're gonna get into some movies this episode. I had a special screening this week. I have a bunch of shit to get through. CreepyCon was a hot mess. Stay tuned for that video. There has to be a whole separate situation, because that was too much cram in the Blu-ray Tuesday, but bitch, craziness. This past Friday before my trip, me and the Overlook family, we sat down and was trying to find something to watch. So I remember back when I was on the season of I Love Money, season 13, the online reality show, one of my fellow contestants that was on the show with me, Sador, shout out to Sador, love her, dirty asses. No questions for they dirty asses. I hope they all lose and um, I hope they get their heads cut off. She told me that she was on a movie that's on Tubi. So I was excited. I was like, you know, let me go watch your movie, girl. So she was in a movie called I Love Juliet. So, you know, like a Romeo and Juliet type of situation. She played a hooker. So I was like, okay, girl, let me go see you hooking and fighting and bopping up on the streets, girl. The audio was horrendous. Outside, you hear all the waves and the water and the cars going by. You got this one dude with this tightest shirt that he's ever I've ever seen on a person. Them, them fucking buttons was just hanging on for dear life. 20,000 in two weeks. I thought the girl popped up at me and through the, through the TV. I don't know. It was about this girl. She liked all the, the rich things and she was dating this, this boy. He was like a thug type of guy. He sold drugs and shit. He owed people money. Basically, she was with him. He buys her stuff and she get happy. She always walks by a park and there's a little kid there and the little kid gave her a beautiful note. She's just like, oh, thank you. I'll cherish it forever. The bitch takes the note, walks two steps and drops it on the floor. I was like, the little kid saw you. He ran away crying. So this bitch is awful. Like, she's like the evil stepmother. Like, bitch, how are you supposed to be Juliet? Cut to Romeo. Romeo's this rich, rich man. Very well-spoken about his business. He meets her and falls in love. He's like, oh, you're, Ro you're my Juliet or whatever. They have some Shakespeare stuff in here. But this is a thug movie. And then you got Mr. Sexy Chocolate from Coming to America that be on the street that don't know have a one shirt in his closet because he always got his chest out and his little hard nipples. But he there, he just saw running the hookers. That's where he sees the door. She's like on two or three scenes, so I was happy for her. But yeah, the movie was cool for what it was, but it just went on longer than what it needed to, and I hated the main character. How do we take his movie? I will say, this one, it took me out with the music. The music was cool in this movie too, by the way. It's on Tubi. But every song was like basically playing a part of what was happening in this movie. Like when she was dancing on the people, it's like, oh, she ain't for everybody. She for the streets, basically. And she was. This bitch was... Mm. She's for the streets. But I just want to shout that out because I shout the Sador for my season. If y'all are into the Tubi craziness, you know how Tubi movies are, check out I Love Juliet. Let me know what you think if you watch it, but it's, it's, it's a mess. So let's get into some movies that I got at CreepyCon. So rewind, uh, CreepyCon happens, make that road trip, get the hotel. And let me tell you, it was the weirdest thing that happened. This big girl popped out the bushes, bitch. She was parked in between this black car and there was a white truck and she popped out the bushes talking about she needed to jump. I was like, what you need a, ju a jump? So she's like, my car, I left something on, we need a jump. And I was like, this is scary. We're in the middle of nowhere. We're in the ghetto of fucking Ontario. And then this bitch is reeling her car out like this. And she was swerving, that was a thug. You would've thought she came from that movie, I Love Juliet. We got the jump. I was kind of low key, low key kind of scared. Cause I was like, there's this white truck here. There's this truck here. Someone else gonna pop out the bushes and get us. I don't know. She went on, but that scared me, girl. So why everything be crazy be happening to me? Hotel smell like weed and saltine crackers. It was weird. So girl, I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back to another creepy con, but I got to meet Nev Campbell, which was amazing. Ski Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, and Jamie Kennedy. But stay tuned, because we do another episode that I'm gonna talk about this in depth, so make sure you watch that. Let's get into some stuff that I did pick up at the event. And shout out to Underworld Subroxa on Instagram. I picked up some movies there thanks to Rich and Priza on Instagram. He wanted me to watch some crazy shit, so he recommended this movie called Duck. I don't know, I'm kind of scared to watch this, but it's about these two kids who basically shoot up schools, and it's like a documentary. It's supposed to be very gruesome, very gory. It's a satire uh, portrayal of two teenage social outcasts and what leads them to open fire their own fellow students and teachers before <laughs> themselves. It says it's a cruel and gory film that's made about the high school shooting phenomenon and considered so controversial that it landed the filmmakers in jail. I don't know, it's $15. I don't know why it's called Duck, but it's the, car the Carbine High Massacre. 
I ain't seen this movie, but I'm kind of scared to watch it. This is like real life horror. We gotta watch it. We gotta talk about it on Horror Boner. Stay tuned, more episodes of those are coming soon. I don't know when, but maybe soon. Next up I got from there is Pieces of Talent. I love the cover. I don't know what the hell's going on in this movie. I don't know if this is gonna be body parts. It's probably body horror. People are probably gonna get chopped up. But this is very rare, hence this expensive ass price. I guess you can't get this anywhere else. I heard good things when I posted it. There was some comments that gave good feedback. Go check out um, Underworlds of Roxa because they got some cool shit. Go, go support. You always gotta check out Seven. They had all these 4Ks on sale. They had their Blueys on sale, you know. They usually give deals, but the guy that I got, he was trying to give me deals, but he wants to give me a good discount. I picked up Bad Biology first. It's a 4K Ultra HD Digi book, and I don't know. I've never seen Bad Biology or what people are abbreviating on Instagram as BB, and um, the only BB I know is Big Brother, so I don't know. That was throwing me off or Big Bitch. I have never seen this, y'all. I just was like, okay, I'm not gonna meet Nev. I gotta get something. I came all this way. So it has hella bonus features on this. Look at this, it's a whole paragraph. It's an essay of bonus features. And a new scan, there's two discs, and they put it in this beautiful little book. I'm gonna watch it, hopefully I like it. So this movie just came out as well, and this is called Delamorte Delamore, AKA Cemetery Man. So I opened this because bitch, oh, I like this cover better because the girl who plays in this movie was there. This was her first convention. She has never been at a convention before, and she was having a lot of fun. She was taking pictures with little cosplayers. She was really talking to people, signing autographs, and there was a deal if you bought this Blu-ray, or she called it a DVD, that you could get it signed. Her name was Fabiana Fambrica. I probably f***ed that up, but she was great. She was super nice, super sweet. She signed this, she's like, afterwards, she was like, we had a, she was like blowing it, trying to make sure you know it dries, because it's red. She was like, first she asked me what color, and I said red. I thought it, it popped off the green a little bit, because blue and black, that wouldn't have worked. She signed it, and she says, can you follow me on Instagram? So y'all better go follow this girl on Instagram, a Fabiana underscore Formica. So give her a follow, because this girl is super sweet, super nice, and she specifically said she wanted to get her following up. And I said, like, girl, let me help you. And that's not it. It also comes with this beautiful, glossy book. Look how, oh, what the f Is she naked? So she had a sheet on. I don't know what's happening here, girl. But this is a, a, a book. I, ain't, I haven't even looked at this. Oh, they got a story. They got lots of words. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's beautiful back then. All right, y'all gotta get this, but this is an amazing addition. Severin, they did their thing with this girl. Oh, it's too many words. Oh, these words. It's, okay, it's some pictures. But yeah, this is a lot going on here, y'all. There's some pictures from the movie. And is this the script? So y'all check this out. It's called De La Morte De La Mor. And I got this from Severin. I, there's some more movies that I got from last week that was late, and it was Silent Night. I talked about this last week. I wanted the steel book, but you know, Walmart don't be putting shit out. Walmart is lazy. Walmart, I don't know why y'all got the exclusives. Y'all should have gave it to Target. Oh, they ain't no better. I don't know what y'all should have did, because this is awful. I like this movie. I don't know, from, from John Woo, I expected a little bit more. I enjoyed it for what it was, but I do feel like it was missing something for me. So it's only released in Blu-ray, and then the 4K release is only on the still book, which is at Walmart that you probably can't get anymore because they don't push it out, and it's sold out online. Speaking of Walmart, while I was on a trip, I stopped by and just browsed their section just to see what they had out there in Ontario. I picked up Your Lucky Day. This dropped on Blu-ray a few weeks ago. I don't know what this is. I know it's a heist thing, I think, but the what sold me, bitch. It was only $14 for one. But it has Angus Cloud! Former Bay Area resident, he's from Oakland, East or West, I don't know which one. But he was from Oakland Girl, and he plays in Euphoria. This is probably one of his last movies. He's also starring in Abigail, plays one of the people that's gonna go watch that vampire ballerina bitch in that one in the house. They get trapped in the house and they start dying. And I love him, he's one of my favorite characters in Euphoria, but sadly he won't be in the next season. I ain't seen this yet, but I do wanna watch it and check it out. And rounding up my little Walmart visit, I picked up Bad Things. So this one's interesting because I saw a lot of people posting this. It has Molly Ringwald, and I like the cover. There's this bitch here running outside. She's giving you, she's giving me Final Girl vibes, minus the yellow part. But you know, Final Girls always have that white T-shirt or tank top with the blue jeans. She's giving that. She's she's is, but she put some yellow on to try to be different. The tagline is "Bad things is a very good thing." I don't know, but we gotta check this out. Group of friends they go spend the weekend in the city at an abandoned hotel. I was already into this girl. And something about the hotel, the grandmother died, and they basically, that's why they went there, because they're going to go inherit it. I like all this. Like, I don't know what the hell's happening here. It's very strangers. This bitch just, sure she go with the chainsaw, but she wearing a different coat. She wearing a black coat, not the yellow coat. It says it's, uh, Gail Rankin delivers an exceptional performance. I don't even know who Gail Rankin is. 
I want to watch this. This is, sounds. That's the only reason why I buy this a DVD. Who wants DVDs? I picked this up because everybody else was getting it, girl. Peer pressure. Before we get into more Blu-rays, so we got to talk about something else. Cinemark and AMC, I believe, they brought back the secret movies. And bitch, there's been some anticipation what these secret movies are. So this past Monday, I went to go check it out. It was like $5, came back from the trip, tired as hell. I was like, you know what? One last thing before we go back to work. So I went to go check this out. I had to go fight the rain and storm and winds and the blackouts of the, of the town. There was three movies that it could have been. It, the only clues were it was PG-13 and it was an hour and 44 minutes. And these minutes kept changing. They kept saying hour 42, hour 44, hour 45. And let me tell you, the three movies that it could have been was Bob Marley's One Love, Madam Webb, and Lisa Frankenstein. All three are PG-13, all three are around the same time. I go in there, I was like, okay, cool, I wanna see all these movies, so I don't really care which one it was, but I was hoping it was Lisa Frankenstein. Cause I wanted to see like a horror movie, even though this was like more of a comedy. I get my popcorn, it was like a dead theater at first. I was like, ain't nobody coming to this secret screening? But no, once I got to my seat, my popcorn and my drink, girl, it was pretty much packed. My row was kind of empty, but everything was packed. I was like, ooh, people, of all types was up in here too. Once the trailer started going, let me tell you, I think this was the longest trailer thing that I've ever had in the movie theater. It was literally 26 minutes, I checked. And it's uh, Lisa Frankenstein. So what this is, is about uh, Catherine Newton, who I love, she was great in this. And it's uh, basically, she's like this loner girl. Basically what happened was she was at home playing card games with her mother when there was a home invasion that killed the mother. She was brutally murdered while the daughter went to go hide in the closet or some shit. The daughter went to go live with the dad and the new stepmom, the evil stepmom, and the new sister-in-law. Or sister, what is it when you have sisters because of the marriage? So basically, she's like the weirdo, the sister's the popular girl, but she's really nice to her. Her name is Lisa Swallows. And let me tell you, this is a PG-13 movie. This is because it had easily been a rated R film. There's so many sexual crude jokes this movie, it's not even funny. So I'm not gonna spoil it because it does come out this weekend. But basically what this movie is about is her infatuation with a cemetery where she reads books to a statue of Cole Sprouse from Sweet Life of Cody, the sweet, the twin, the other twin, not the hot one, but the other one. So at school, she wears these ugly ass clothes she looks like a hot mess. So she goes to school one day, and she has a huge crush on this, this popular guy. And she tells the sister about it all the time. I don't wanna spoil this too much, I don't wanna spoil something. But anyway, so she basically has a crush on him, so they go to a party, and she's there, and he's like, offers her a drink. And she wants to be cool, so she drinks it. Somebody spiked this drink, so it made her go crazy. She made a, a wish to some cloud because she was embarrassed. And then, the Frankenstein comes to life. The statue she sings songs to. Your hand? He came to life, but he missed the body part because he has no hand, no ear, and no dick, and he wants those things. When people make her mad, he kind of helps her. He goes, Ooh, he moves around. It's a really weird ass movie. But it's very funny, a lot of comedy. I don't want to spoil this too much. But basically, as they go on, death starts happening, death follows them. And then her one last wish is to like ride a dick before she dies or gets. Uh, what is it, arrested. So yeah, so this movie's crazy. I liked it. I had a lot of fun with it. It might not be for everybody, but I liked it. I liked the music, Catherine Newton's acting. I liked all the crude jokes. I liked uh, Cole Sprouse. I mean, anybody could have played that role because he was basically like a, like a, he didn't really talk. He was just like, ooh, grunted around. It's like a good Valentine's movie too. It's about love-ish. So this is the weakest, I think, month, a week of the month of her Blu-rays. Not a lot came out today. A lot of like weird re-releases, uh, a Criterion release, I don't remember the name, it looked boring. Candyland finally dropped, so I picked up Candyland. So I reviewed this a, a while ago. I feel like this movie came out like two years ago, I don't know. So this movie is like a little slasher that takes place at like a trailer park or a truck stop where these ladies and this boy, they be like getting paid to f the truck drivers that roll on in. And then there's like a slasher that's killing them all one by one. Sounds great, right? But when I watched it, I just remember like being like, ugh, I don't know if I like this. It wasn't that great. It was weird. And some of these girls are stupid as <laughs> That's what you get in these slashers. But I think I'll need to rewatch this. There's no new bonus features. No bonus features, really. Oh yeah, there's commentary and digital design. I guess that's a feature right of some sort. I don't know. But this was released by MBD Visual. And it was like $15 on Amazon. That's where I got this. I was hoping for a slip cover. It has the same cover that the release had when it came to VOD. If I pick this up, because I want to get something this week. I don't know, I get, I get itches to get like on Tuesday to get a new Blu-ray and it's really hard to pick something up in the store because you know, you can't get anything in the store anymore. Like Target, they've gone to finally 
bi-weekly. So they already were bi-weekly. So they still have release dates that you can still order on Amazon and all that good stuff, but they're not gonna put the shit out until next week. Like, I think next week or the week after is Miss Marvel. Hopefully that falls in the bi-weekly week, because otherwise if y'all want that exclusive, you ain't gonna get it till the week after. Also that dropped today was, it was a misprint or they pushed it back. But Massacre Video put out Blood Rain in 4K Ultra HD that was supposed to come out three weeks ago, but they pushed it back to today. So shout out to Paramount Pictures, because Paramount Pictures sent me a little surprise, and it is Footloose. So Footloose is celebrating its 40th anniversary, and they re-released the Blu-ray in um, regular 4K and a steelbook. So it's gonna be a steelbook edition for this as well. And this does hit hit shows February 13th. If you're Target, it'll probably be February 22nd or whatever the week is after that, because you know, they buy weekly. This is the cover. I like the little gloss to this. This is nice. And it includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital, the digital code. So, um, I was thinking this was gonna have a whole bunch more to this, but, oh, there is. So, all right, so it has a 4K release and there's hella bonus features. Hella, let me see anything that says new. Interviews, tell me a story, Footloose songs. All right, so it's the same kind of shit. So, I heard, let me tell y'all, I ain't seen Footloose in a while, but I like Footloose. But when I posted this, tell me why people gonna blow on my comments talking about, I'm glad you got this free because the transfer on this is shit. And I was like, oh my God, I never get to watch it yet. I actually need to rewatch this movie. I just know, this was my favorite 80s movie. I don't know, I don't know what to say there. I don't know why I paused. It does hit February 13th. It is like a love story, so it's kind of a cool like Valentine's-esque uh, thing to have. And it's also celebrating 40 years. Paramount Pictures is putting this out and y'all gotta go pick up your copy. Y'all gonna get this? Y'all gonna get the Steelbook? Let me know. Kevin Bacon's in this. And um, I forgot the bitch name. All right, so Footloose, let me know if y'all like this movie. Check it out. So that's it for this week's Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. I'm gonna see you guys next week. Bye. Ugh, I've stopped myself, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I should talk about that Tubi movie from Friday.